Sabbath greeting. Make a loud noise for the Lord. Awake, awake, O Zion. Rosh Hashanah is here. An appointed festival of the Lord. Uh, a Sabbath. One of his holy convocations, yet with an extra responsibility, an extra calling, an extra blessing to blow the shofar, to blow the trumpet as the harvest ends and the new year begins. Make a joyful noise for the Lord. Hallelujah! And who more so than me and you? Our Lord is risen. The King of heaven has come down and lived a life and ascended back to heaven in total victory and is alive now interceding at the throne and preparing a place for us to go to. Where's the joy? Where's the passion? Where's the sound of the shofars being blown? The hubbub of the saved. Wretched fools. They're like everybody else, cowering in their comfortable beds, considering their, their plight or their success, their comfort. Not a single note, not a single raised voice, apart from mine, and I'm the worst. I mean, oh, if I sat thought in bed, I'm not trustworthy, I'm not obedient. I praise God that I've not been put in a situation. And when I have been put in those situations, I've failed, failed, failed. Oh, and now I'm a, I'm a believer. But I have a, a greater confidence. Greater expectation. I would pray. And I thought there was a time I was teaching in school in a school and uh, year nines, year tens, 13, 14 year olds and one table was particularly off task, not working, just making a show of not filing wood but perhaps just or sanding wood but perhaps polishing it with sanding paper. So that was a teacher and as a, as a leader of course, you step forward to encourage, to extol the virtues of the application and work, to teach the truth that these things are necessary, that we shouldn't be idle. And on one side of the table were two girls, maidens, beautiful. And I said, what would you do, sir? What would I do in what? And they mentioned a day, uh, it's a, a, a movie thing, it's probably come from um, a Japanese anime canon manga movie sort of arena. And it's basically a day of lawlessness. It was a, a movie idea at certain times of the year in order to keep the populations down and the people satisfied there would be a, a day of law days of lawlessness no uh, law applies no uh, um, no holds barred no nothing a day of complete and total uh, freedom The first thought that came into my head was not a pleasant one. Well, I mean, it satisfied certain uh, base desires of mine. I'm six foot tall, 300 pounds in old money, 18 and a half stone.
But it wouldn't have been an appropriate response, and certainly not to the audience, given that one of the young men who was listening is probably a, a, an, an alpha, is, was a, an alpha male who was holding court, who was probably the leader of this whole conversation anyway, and was probably thinking along the same lines as my dark thought. So I uh, let the spanner in the works pass. That dark thought reabsorbs it itself into the reality that is my human condition. Then I gave the rather well, feeble answer I'd pray. Then I walked off. Maybe I said something, you know, get, keep get working. Or... The lesson was the last lesson of the day, and, and of course, in a workshop environment, you, you have to spend time clearing away and putting away the tools. Like all the students know this, it's uh, part and parcel of what we do and what we teach. And as the end of the lesson came, and I, and I uh, called the students to. to uh, to finish what they were doing and to, and to pack away, to put away the tools, the equipment, the things, to clean down the workshop, to get it ready for another day. The two girls decide to abscond. They decide to run out and my back was turned. I looked down the corridor. There's no way you can make that distance to try and stop them. <coughs> and they laugh and run, run away, like many disobedient children do from time to time. However, children are not the best planners. They're not the best thinkers. It's almost, well, it's almost like they're children. They're a bit innocent, a bit naive, which is why they probably ask questions like that in the first place. But unbeknownst, or unthought about by the two girls is the first lesson the next day it's the same class in the same room class come in I ask a colleague to start looking in the class so just to supervise when they get down to work and these two girls are removed off to one side into another room I sit, with them. I sit down to give them a, a corrective chat. And I felt moved to tell them a story, to tell them the truth. So I sat them down and said, I want to speak a little bit more about yesterday. I said, if you asked me a question, what would I do on the Lord's Day? There's a name for it, I can't remember. I don't really want to think too hard. I said my initial response wasn't the one. Well, the response I gave you wasn't my initial response. You see, I'm a man. I'm a male human being. I'm around six foot tall and 300 pounds. I said my initial response when you asked me that question is that I'd go out and find a couple of young hotties like you and I would rape the shit out of you. And I said the reason that I pray, the reason why I gave that answer is because to overcome that thought is what I'd pray for. That rather than joining in what everybody else would be doing, everybody, every male, 300 pound, six foot tall, is that I pray that I remember my commitment to Jesus. 
I'd remember that I'd never, ever step outside of the law. And I'd be the person who'd pick up a piece of two before. And I would defend you and your honour until my arms tired or my life ended. That's why it's not very fair when you run out on a lesson laughing. Leave me to tidy it away. I don't know on the rightness of my corrective process or the appropriateness of, of telling the truth to those young girls. But I know in my own family we've had incidents with uh, our young women who are a little bit delusioned in terms of what's right and what's wrong and what men are capable of. In the world of girl power a woman is free to make her own decisions and that includes about her body and about her freedom where she is and who she's with and the understanding the simple truth about the wretchedness of mankind's condition and the savage nature that is within all of us can leave them very exposed and very vulnerable genuine concern to those that love them. I would want my daughter to know about boundaries, to know about limitations. I'd want my sons to know the same. I'd want them to know about their wretched condition and that the only hope for salvation, the only hope for justice and truth, for, for respect, gangster or otherwise is to live a life that's blameless before God it's not a coincidence that uh, as part of our Bible study this week we read Psalm 101 about the responsibility of rulers and that's you know my wretched condition it's based almost entirely around my wretched condition and I come before the Lord and I ask him for grace and favour and mercy more than he's already shown me because I need him in the entirety of my life to supersede my choices and decisions because I, deep down I'm not certain that I can be trusted. Oh, you know, you've made a commitment. Yes, I can make a commitment. I can say I can be upright and honest. I, I, I'm truthful to, a, to, to my detriment to the point of, you know, sufferance. But until I'm tested in that way that, that, that God has tested some of the believers, until a gun's held to my head or a sword to my throat, you, you, you don't know, you can't know what your response is, whether you cry or run or hope and pray or change or do anything to keep your wretched life. As the tide turns and rises and the day passes, I've got to get out of bed, I've got to, I've got to make choices and decisions and commitments and pray Lord be with me go before me steer the world in whatever ways possible that, that those things don't happen and don't occur and praise you for every time they haven't and apologize for the times when I've been given responsibility the Bible says very clearly if you, are, if you can show that you're trustworthy with a the little then the Lord will trust you with a lot Pray forgiveness and pray for strength and courage to be placed in situations that are familiar where mistakes have been made and come in the name of Jesus for his glory alone to trust and obey. Amen. Heaven's worst angel.
what I am. Michael. Even my beloved brother in Christ has been this week trying to convince me to change my name. The name that God gave me. Here on this shore. Who am I, Lord? A voice from heaven says, Michael. He who is like the Lord. Oh. oh. <laughs> good day. On a good day. And had the ideals and surrounded by all the things that, that would distract me from being the wretch that I am. And I hope and want and yearn for perfection, love, splendor, glory, majesty, righteousness, uprightness. In the 1990s, I had a top job for one of the biggest companies in the world. It was quite the, uh, well, blue-eyed boy of international business manufacturing. I used to stand arrogantly in the pubs and tell people that I wanted to save the world. Strange when our noble intent is one of the things that could actually condemn us. It's pride. Meet the one who saved the world. 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that right? Me, me, me. Arbiter of the Holy Spirit of oh God. Called to be more than. Known to be special. I was cavalier in my attitude with it. Isn't it clear to everybody? But I didn't know my purpose. I didn't understand my calling and barreled through life according to my own will and purpose and the self aggrandized perception you know of what I need to be or need to follow or need to do where I need to go because you yearn to do the right thing, but you end up, of course, doing the wrong thing. You're deluded. If you're outside of Christ, you're a fool. All of your life is folly and excrement. And now I'm changed. Now I'm cold. Now I'm set up right, named by the Most High, the Creator of heaven and earth, given a, a role, a, a privilege beyond all others, and it comes down. I'm a herald, yes, aren't I? Hmm? Even this, this little pipistrelle, this tiny thing, so much more than me.
herald the most high come to call and point and say make a straight path for the Lord to travel equipped like no other <laughs> I mean who else could you meet qualified scientist engineer worked in international business for the biggest companies in the world to seek a better way, yes. Wrecked relationship. Cruelty. Folly. Sin. Drugs and parties. Idolatry. hurt people harmed people I've explored and used witchcraft and fetishism I thought myself clever when I've been influenced by demons struggle in every contest. Even now, as a believer, as a teacher, preaching at church of one, I'm a pursuer, personal grievance for unfair dismissal. Service or support my child in America or her mother, the woman who abandoned me. I can't <laughs> maintain my marriage here. It turns out to have been an absolute sham. A woman caught up in a cult looking for a visa. Taking the opportunity, gullible idiot. Being <laughs> the gullible idiot. Being the gullible idiot. <coughs> so you're upright and you're chosen and you're different. You've got a role in the whole, you know. Shebang. While you're waiting, while you're, you know, smoking your fags or standing with your hands in your pockets, waiting for a moment to speak the word, to point up to heaven and say, Lord, put in your sickle and reap a harvest. You make such a fluff of things that. Even the people that were going to listen won't listen, or just turn their backs, turn to their own ways, turn to their own understanding. If that's you, if that's what you want, if you're the, you know, an archon of heaven, what's the point of being anything different than what we are down here? We'll just fail. We're just scumbags. May as well dump our rubbish and roll about in the filth like everybody else. You see, there was a day when people would wait and talk and share and pass the time, but when they hear of the things of heaven, they run, they move, they flee. Because the things of heaven are just too much to take in. I've got a million dollar house, a job and a car, 2.7 kids, <sighs> bills to pay, 
The world around me is melting and falling apart. With viruses. Is it virus I? Sicknesses. There's disease. Strife, struggle. So I, I, I pray and pray to my gods. The things that are told me of old. To the tree, to the spirit, to whatever I've asked into my life that that has somehow responded and recognised me. And whenever anyone mentions Jesus or carries the cross or seems a little bit different and connected to something greater and bigger, well... I don't want to listen. I don't want to take the time. I don't want to drop out a light speed. The ugly career of my life... And I mean careering as in like, woo, whoa, woo, a chaotic crash landing. I don't want to stop and listen. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a busy man. I'm important. And the guy who's speaking, there's something about him. challenges me that judges me that looks down upon me that thinks that it's better than me oh lord what a terrible witness I am I'm sorry Because we want to, I'm 300 pounds and six foot tall. I'm not a figure of gentleness and meek repose. You see, I might be like the Lord. But <coughs> I might strive with the things of heaven. I might look to the things that are right and beautiful and true. I'm a fat, ugly, the truth is, I'm a fat, ugly Englishman. Six foot tall and 300 pounds. <coughs> Quite a scary and ugly figure. Grotesque. And I'm loud when people expect you to be quiet and I'm forthright when people expect you to be polite. I listen to people something that's not done in this day and age very often so when people complain about something over and over again I say well why don't you change that <coughs> which is not what people want to hear am I insensitive to other people's struggles God knows that they're insensitive to mine Every moment of every day is some kind of terror. Some kind of fight. Some kind of sickening yearning to be anywhere but here. Oh, I, I stepped up. <coughs> I took the job, I volunteered. Picked up the cross. Put me in the vanguard, Lord. Put me in the front lines. There's no place I won't go. There's no place I won't be for you. For you are splendid and majestic and righteous and good and true. You're the best of the best. And I want to do my best for you. Just like that twat Lucifer. <coughs> Think excuse the language. Make a better job of it than him.
Is it any wonder I think I won't make it? I know the depths of my depravity. <coughs> Oh, do I have morals? Yeah. There are places you don't go. Yeah. I've been tempted to go. Yeah, but I don't go there. Children, siblings, homosexuality. And certainly not since I came to Christ. Since I came to Jesus, since I was baptized. But I operate on a <laughs> pushing the envelope. Wrestling with God. Mindset and mentality. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna say it gains me nothing. What a splendor. What a wonder, what a, what a God. How would I ever lift my voice to another? How can I not pursue and thirst and yearn for the things, the days of the splendid, the most high? How can I fail but to, you know, testify? God, who is God? Is God he who placed a thrush up on the chimney stack of our house the day I bought my daughter a book on birds? I'd never seen one before or since in that area, in that place. And there was this giant one. Look at that. Same daughter I gave up uh, in my vain pursuit. Oh. I didn't have a choice. But I did. I could have got my dad to commit his... And he would have done his wealth, his entire house, his being into a legal battle I could have proved problems <laughs> still apparent problems in truth ah in truth I could have received her here I could have brought her into the fight into the front line I would have looked after her. Oh, a different priorities that may be. But we would have survived. A man of morals. Not loose morals. Very fixed, very rigid, very firm. Things that I'll do and things that I don't do. Bring my excess rubbish to dump it by the bins of the park. Well done. Well, not well done, no. I, I prayed for them on the way down because, of course, uh, at the back of that initial condemnation and upset, there's a complete failure of understanding somewhere. A moral insanity at the back of it. It's not educated us to be responsible. It's not caused us to take the lower road. Morning to you. Happy New Year. We claim nothing of the old country. We claim nothing of the time. I speak Happy New Year because it's the Jewish calendars. Rosh Hashanah, the spiritual new year.
first of Tishri, the day that we make the loud and joyful noise for the Lord. Yet who's culturally aware? Who's posted on Facebook? Where's the change in Google's, you know, emblem? Where's the fireworks? Where's the rejoicing and the splendor of the people in the streets? Not the only one is wretched. Not the only one that's too busy or following my own. Selfish ideas and plans. I'm not the only one that's naive to think that this won't come at a price. God is unfolding a plan for our salvation and it's glorious. Do you take part even on a Sabbath day? And then what do you run into? The song we sang as a child, the song that delighted me about God's uh, presence and reality. We got new books called Songs of Praise from the BBC and the school I was at. <coughs> new tapes and a weekly act of, just one weekly act of worship to celebrate in sing, just sing, not have to do maths or English or write stories or behave and just sing Cross over the road my friend as the Lord his strength to lend his compassion has no end. Cross over the road. I can't pick up every piece of rubbish. I can't help every starving child. I can't save anybody. God can. So what I'm called to do is to pray, is to look, is to reach and to teach and believe that God can give life as well as take it away. That God can come again uh, and do something that makes sense of all this chaos that leads us to splendor and joy to pray into this new year for his fire to come just as in the other new year I was told he would shake the nation shake the foundation well, they've certainly done that with COVID-19 and I look forward and I pray to see the day of his fire falling in this world for his glory and his name's sake. Amen. <laughs>